I'm going to be discussing a lot of parameters in Betaflight and just a lot of things that I consider when I set up a quad for myself, how I like to fly for my personal feel. It may not be your preference, but I hope that the parameters that I discuss are things that you might think about a little bit more about how to use them and it could help you in the future. But before that, before I talk about the slew of new props that are coming out and have come out recently from every manufacturer, I don't, I have beg these manufacturers to stop making so many props. They are so confusing. Even I can't keep track of all the props and they are all just kind of blending together. But before I talk about that, let's talk about maybe a little bit of general wisdom maybe moving forward so what you're watching right now is my main quad which has been totally wrecked but my main quad uh, which is a 2208 quad with 1800 kV they're 2208 1800 kV motors you're watching it fly on 4s right now on the HQ 5.1 by 4.1 by 3 prop now the reason I'm flying this on 4s is to show you how useful a quad with low kV is on 4s just a year ago Nobody would even consider running a 5-inch quad on 1800 kV. That is really, really low kV. But today, I would personally say that I think that low kV around 17, 18, 1900 kV on 4S is probably more useful to me than it than a 4S quad that's actually set up for 4S, 2500, 2600, 2700 kV. And the main reason why I say that is because 4S quads typically have some problems managing their battery. They they draw a lot of amps and the battery doesn't quite have the ability to dish out the amps the way we want, as fast as we want and as often as we want. And that's the real benefit when you move to 6S. Yes, things do change and the feel of the quad does definitely change, but you don't have that problem as much. And so what I would recommend is any quad that's built from here forward I personally think it should be built for 6S and you can still fly it on 4S. You can do probably all the same stuff on 4S. You don't need um, 2800 kV motors on 4S. You're just going to destroy batteries. There's kind of no point. So yeah, I probably fly 4S more on my 6S quads than I do actually 6S. And so what I'm going to show you next is this this um, 4-in-1 board. This is the Typhoon. Oh, this is the Typhoon 1.2, and the original Typhoon and previous board that came before it were probably not so reliable, but I have had no problems with this one except for one really annoying problem. And the reason I'm showing you this particular one is because it's like a $34 board. I don't know if you can even buy the 1.2 anymore because apparently one of the companies that recreated this board, and it's now the Bardwell board, got really upset that it's being sold for so cheap, so now uh, Airbot isn't going to make any more of this board or they won't allow it to be sold for so cheap because they have a customer that has rebranded it in their own name. Anyways, the main thing I wanted to explain about this board is that the connector on this board is a typical connector. It's the same connector on any other board. I've compared the pins and, and the way that it's laid out and everything to every other board. And what I found is that there are multiple different like connectors of the same connector so so like uh, depending on which company these manufacturers buy their connector from the pins are actually different and the problem I was having with this 4-in-1 and the, the wire I was using on it which was from my flight controller it was not it was not from the 4-in-1 was that the the pins that actually engage the like the, 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 the female pins that engage the male pins inside the connector itself weren't actually engaging fully so every time i would bump a branch or bump into something my quad would just restart and that's pretty scary because it could potentially just vibrate apart and restart while i'm flying which didn't happen in the air but it did happen the next time i tried to plug in a battery the connector had just fallen loose it didn't fall out it just wasn't engaging the power pin so it didn't work i even went in there and squeezed the pins together to try and get it to engage and it still did the same thing. So I would be very cautious about this. This is one reason why I really wish there was still a mechanism to solder hard wires onto the foreign one to your flight controller. Because if you're doing long range or something, I don't want to have to worry about, I mean, I don't fly long range, but if I did, I definitely don't want to have to worry about my connector falling apart as I'm flying. 
the next thing to discuss is the extremely slow progress of my frame design. So this is the newest update finally. I think it's pretty much the final update. As you can see, I'm running ridiculously long standoffs. It flies very well with these standoffs actually. The, um, the, the balance of the battery and the GoPro on top actually doesn't throw things off much and that's because I'm using a relatively light battery. It's 185 gram 1050 milliamp 6s battery on top with a relatively light gopro if you did load this up with a hero 7 and um, a, like 1100 or 1200 milliamp 6s battery it will probably be an issue but as it is right now it is just barely barely top heavy with these tall 35 millimeter standoffs and the main reason i'm testing these 35 millimeter standoffs is because there's so many people that don't like seeing props in view when they fly so it is a straight X. I've actually made it seven millimeters narrower front to back, but the props are still separated far enough apart to give you that proper um, just feel of the props so that they don't feel like they're being constrained by each other front to back. Uh, and uh, it is just a straight X. And with these tall standoffs, as you saw in the previous video, you still see props in view. I, I mean, I have done so much. I've pulled the front out an extra five millimeters. I've tried to move the arms back a little bit. I put 35 millimeter standoffs and it still has props in view with low tilt. Specifically low tilt, that's the key. Low tilt meeting, meeting 20 degrees and under. At 20 degrees tilt, I still get props in view and I give up. So the frame is gonna come with all four arms plus two extra arms which are like this, see if I can show you. So you get the regular arms. You're also gonna get two more arms that are just kind of um, angled back a little bit. So if I put this up against the, the holes here, you can see that this new arm or this secondary arm, it moves the prop, the, the whole motor prop assembly back another 26 millimeters. I didn't finish this video yesterday like I wanted, so I'm adding this segment because I had a little bit more time to fly this morning. And I tested the dead cat style arms that I showed you to try and get props out of view because the tall 35 millimeter standoffs did not actually get the props completely out of view. So I dropped it down to the 20 millimeter standoffs and put the dead cat arms on, which wasn't really that hard to do. And it's surprisingly still very well balanced. It seems like I gave it enough running room on the on the back of the top plate to slide the battery back an extra like millimeter or two and the whole quad stays very well balanced in fact i'm going to pull the back out an extra millimeter just to give a little bit extra room but here's what it looks like this is what it looks like when flying you still see the very edge of props in view and the key here is getting props out of view at low tilt which is 20 degrees and under it's just the gopro has such a freaking wide field of view that it's painful, <laughs> it's painful to try and get the props out of you because I'm designing this frame more, just as much for myself, just, just for fun flying, as I want it to be useful for things like more professional shoots, if that ever happens for me or somebody else wants to use it for, for that. But 99.999% of the time, I'm just flying for myself and I actually like the props in view and I don't want to compromise the flight characteristics of the frame to get the props out of view but now you at least have an option because like I said, you're gonna get all the sets of arms with the, with the quad. You're gonna get the full X set of arms and you're also gonna get the um, dead cat style arms so that you can hopefully get props out of view depending on what tilt you use and what camera you're using. So you're gonna get the tall 35 millimeter standoffs. You're gonna get the short 23 millimeter standoffs. We went with 23 millimeter because it just fits FPV cameras much easier and the extra two millimeters doesn't really make all that big of a difference. Slamming your frame doesn't actually make all that big of a difference, at least on the way that I've set it up. Plus I have 22 weight motors, so they're really nice and tall. So the props are higher, so it's okay to add a little extra millimeter to it. It actually flies totally fine with 35 millimeter standoffs as well. It's very well balanced. You get all those options and you get the swept back arms. If you're running a Hero camera, which, the, which is the bigger body camera, with the 20 millimeter standoffs, or the 23 millimeter standoffs, and the swept back arms, you will probably be able to get props completely out of view because the lens on that camera is higher up. And you'll probably be able to get props out of view completely at like 15 degrees tilt even. With the session, however, you will probably need 35 millimeter standoffs with the swept back arms, to be able to get the props out of you at 20 degrees tilt. If you move up to 25 degrees tilt, you're gonna get props out of you anyways. So it's up to you. So it's giving you all the options. This is the frame of options, trying to give you all the ability. You're gonna get all this mounting hardware. 
I'm gonna including um, stack screws, like long stack screws that are steel, so that your stack won't break when you hit a, a leaf. Like you'll have these little lock nuts, you'll have spacers, you'll have 20 uh, M2 stack screws that are super long, so you can run super long M2 stacks, super tall M2 stacks, and you can just cut the screws if you want to shorten them. You'll also get M2 lock nuts, which I don't even know if many people have even seen, <laughs> as well as M2 spacers. You're going to get all the hardware, all the hardware for mounting the, the motors, motors on the arms with the 5mm arms, because motors come with short screws for some reason, even though 5mm is pretty much standard these days. Anyways, you're going to get all that. This is going to be the frame of, of options, and this is one of the ways I'm going to be kind of trying to battle the cloning problem, even though I honestly don't really see the cloning problem as a big deal, because I don't price my frames. I mean, I don't even make money off this, but I just force Sergio not to sell the frames for an excessively high price. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to give you as much value as I can. I'm also going to be offering the frame in 6 and 7 inch. I haven't designed the sweat back arms or anything for either of those just yet. Maybe I will in the future, but they will come in 6 and 7. I also hope to offer the frame in a couple of different finishes. The oil rub finish, the um, gloss finish, which I personally like and I think everybody I show likes as well. However, the gloss finish might make it a little bit difficult to fit the screws through the first time because the gloss will get in there and make it a little bit tighter, which is totally fine, I think. You'll just have to thread it the first time. Um, yeah, there's a couple other things I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be inspecting a forged cosmetic layer on the top and bottom of the carbon because the forged carbon does look pretty. I agree. It does look really pretty. It's just not as strong as the regular carbon. And I think that if the top and bottom layers are only forged, I think it'll still impact the durability and strength, but maybe is not as much as it, as I'm thinking. So maybe it'll be okay. And I also want to offer that in the gloss, which I think would be awesome with all chamfered corners and everything, obviously. Okay, let's continue. So we have a whole slew of new props, so many props from so many manufacturers. I really wish they would just stop making so many props and just focus on one or two good five inch props and discontinue all the rest. It's getting incredibly confusing. I have received so many sample props and prototype props. I don't even remember all of them anymore at all, just over the past like five months. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I know that I, I don't even have some props that are gonna be coming out soon. And I don't really discuss them anymore because it honestly is preference. It doesn't really matter anymore. Any prop from the past six to eight, even a year, is going to be good. It's going to be pretty good. Like, you can't really make a wrong choice. Just try them and see what you like. Now, that being said, let's talk about all the props. <laughs> There's really only one prop that kind of inspired me to make this video again because I haven't made videos about props in a long time. And that's this prop. It's the Ethix HQ. S3 prop, which is a 5, not a 5.1, by 3.1 pitch prop that's very, very special. And I'll get to this kind of closer to the end. But first, let's talk about Dahl. So Dahl is special because they they actually have an aerodynamics professor in China that designs their props for them. They do also have testers, in-house testers, but primarily all the work is done by this one engineer. And he originally designed the... Um, the cyclone line which he did a pretty good job on i would say it was a pretty darn popular prop at the time and then he kept making props more cyclone and you can see that the aerodynamic shape or the the airfoil of the prop hasn't really changed all that much it still has that little dip in the in the middle and uh, they're they're pretty much mostly computer engineered to fly the way that they do they have performed historically pretty well however we do have a lot of new props and i personally am not a fan of i don't even know this name 5249 and 525047 5047 i'm i'm definitely not a fan of the 5249 it weighs both of these weigh about like 5.4 5.5 grams which is a little bit a little bit on the heavier side they are extremely durable and that is probably the biggest feature of the cyclone props they're probably the most one of the most durable props on the market even today they're still one of the most durable props on the market but they but the, they also lack that response that i want so much i personally really prefer response now the 54 52 49 is an actual 5.2 inch blade it is it is long it is not short like look how much longer that blade is that that is that is actually how much longer the blade is in real life so it is unlikely to fit your five inch frame unless you have a, a, a heap of extra room around the prop area now the 50 52 49 the amp draw on it is pretty high it is a really steep pitch it is really a steep pitch prop 
and um, it, it it's just sluggish. It's sluggish to respond. It has good grip. It has good acceleration. It's obviously going to give you good speed if you have the motor to spin the prop. But it's it's got a high amp draw. It's sluggish to respond, and it's not a prop that I personally pr would fly like pretty much for anything. The 5247 is a lot better, a lot, a lot better, and it feels indistinct to me. It feels indistinguishable from the new Gemfan 5149.9 because they already made the 5149, which is a very popular race prop because it has fantastic high-speed control. The 50 5149.9 trades that high speed control for a more well balanced all around prop and it's very 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 similar to the 5047 from Dahl the new 5047 and there's also an HQ prop I don't remember which one but there's another HQ prop that is is very similar to them as well they're pretty much indistinguishable from each other I think the um, Gemfan prop might draw slightly fewer amps. I don't clearly remember. I haven't flown that prop in probably a couple weeks and I sent it to somebody. I sent like all my props to somebody. I don't remember through who somebody that bought something. I just sent them a bunch of props. Next we have uh, Gemfan. We have the Gemfan. This is the 5042 and the 5043. So the 5042 was a prop that they made. It's called the Wind Dancer. They made it a long time ago. Um, the plastic that they originally made it in was really bad. It was that kind of plastic that if you bend it, it finds white lines, and then it, it doesn't really ever bend back. You can never actually bend it, bend it back, and it does bend rather easily. So they changed the plastic. They moved it to the more recent plastic, the same plastic as the, um, the T-Motor prop that they make. And it is a lot better. However, the prop still feels to me like it doesn't have much low end because it's, I'm assuming it's just, a, I don't know, weird pitch or something, and it doesn't have much high end. It just feels like you're stuck in second gear. You can't do anything. It takes a little while for it to pick up, and it doesn't do anything at the top end. So I wasn't really fond of it, but it does have really good control. It does, it does definitely have really good control, and it does have good grip. So this is the 5043, the updated version, which just has a little bit more, more pitch on it. Don't really look at the pitch of these props. They may or may not mean something. It's hard to say. When you compare these two, the new version definitely looks like it is a little bit steeper, but there's probably so much changing in the aerodynamics that it's hard to say. I mean, come on. This is this bottom one is supposed to be a 4.2 and the bottom one is the top one is supposed to be a 4.3. That's that's a lot of pitch change in my, to my eye if you're going to tell me that it's only a 0.1 pitch change. So I don't really trust these numbers at all. I think they're just names, and they're running out of names. So they're doing things like 5149.9, which is ridiculous. Anyways, the 5043 is a much, much, much improved prop. However, it still does weigh about 4.8 grams. Let me check. Yeah, 4.8 grams. So it is still a relatively heftier prop, not the lightest prop. And it feels almost identical to the T-Motor 5143, which I personally have been flying for the past six months and I love. I don't know why this prop is so good, but it feels incredible in the air. The response, because it weighs 3.6 grams, 3, yeah, about 3.6 grams, it is so responsive in the air and the blades are so skinny and they're so easy for the motor to spin through the air. It just feels creamy and responsive and amazing. And the 5042, 43, feels almost identical however it's got a lot more meat on it a lot more plastic so it is going to be more durable however it also loses what's amazing about the t-motor prop it does not have the same response it has a little bit more low-end throttle feel like throttle punch feel but it just lacks the response of the t-motor prop so uh, to me it's kind of pointless i mean i'm not going to run a prop that feels kind of different just because it's more durable. I'm, I don't crash all that much. Now, the T-Motor prop has been the mainstay for me for quite some time now. I really do like this prop. If you've been watching any of my Instagram or any of my, my videos, I pretty much only use this prop. And at one point I had like 30 sets of this prop and I would actually go through them in a month or two. Like I actually would do them. And the reason why I would go through them is because they're relatively fragile. They they are, I mean, it's a flimsy prop. It's a 3.6 gram prop. What can you expect from a 3.6 gram prop? But the main reason why I like this prop is because it had really, really soft, low-end throttle feel. It was not slow. This is not a slow prop. It's not the fastest prop, but it's definitely not a slow prop. It had very good efficiency. Again, not the very best efficiency, but it was very, very good. 
and it was it just was a very nice feel. The low end throttle was creamy and so smooth and soft, and the the mid to top end had some power to it. So it was really really easy to maintain low altitude. I didn't need to add any weird throttle curves or do anything funny in beta flight or anything. But then HQ kept making their 5.1 inch props. They made the 5.1 by 5, then 5.1, then 4.6, then 4.5, then 3.1, then they remade the 3.1, then they remade the 3.1 again, and now they made the 4.1. So, so this is the HQ 4.1. It is not a V1S prop, I don't think. No, it's not a V1S prop. What the V1S name means is that it's the plastic. It's the name of the plastic. So that's their way of of stating what kind of plastic they're using. I know nobody really knows this. They don't really explain it to anybody. I just have to ask Zong to find out. Anyways, this is a different plastic and it is much better. It is durable, it is stiffer, it, it performs better overall. And it was a very hard thing to move from the T-Motor prop to the 4.1, the 5.1 by 4.1 prop because the T-Motor prop just feels really incredible. The difference with this prop and the main reason why I wanted to move to this prop, aside from it being more durable, is because it does have more power, both in the low end and the top end. It has more power, more speed. And even though that's not really all that important in Acro, and I am running a 2208, 1800 or 1900 kV motor, it still matters to me and I still want that extra feel because while the T-Motor prop is amazing in close proximity environments, it's not very good in wide open environments because it really doesn't have that top end. And when you're coming down super hard from a drop, it, it takes a lot more energy than I would want to stop the fall and pull out of the dive. So this is, this is, these are the reasons why I've, I tended to prefer the, the 5.1 by 4.1, but it does have one annoying flaw to this, to the, to the HQ prop. So the, this HQ prop, it has a little bit of a bump in the throttle at the bottom range. So it makes it really hard to maintain low altitude and sometimes can make it hard to pull out of little like bunny dives, like small dives, because it has this weird pop in the throttle. So the way I, I had to deal with this is by adding a throttle curve. And I typically don't like throttle curves at all. Somebody showed me the throttle curve in Betaflight actually was Corey Ibanez. I don't know why I didn't realize that, <laughs> that Betaflight had that throttle curve option there. I was only doing it in my controller and I never really liked it so much because it was generally unpredictable. It didn't, I could, even though the controller is doing the same thing every time, I felt like it would just respond differently. When my finger would move, the prop wouldn't do what I wanted it to do. And I think the main reason for that is because the prop, it's, so if you've been flying for a while, it's pretty easy for you to tell where the throttle bump is, where your prop actually starts giving you a significant amount of thrust, where it just ramps up in thrust really quickly. And being able to recognize where that is and like what percentage point it is in your throttle range is pretty crucial for if you are gonna use a throttle curve to try and smooth out those weird bumps in a prop. And that's really all I personally want the throttle curve for. I, I had to play with the throttle curve a little bit, but essentially I landed on about a throttle curve centered at 0.3, 30%, and the percentage of actual expo in the throttle curve about 16 to 18. I still don't really know. And then the other main reason why that's a huge issue is because if I change my um, my max endpoint on the throttle, which I very often do, because if I'm flying in a big environment or a small environment, I change the endpoint on my throttle, and it's almost always set to 90. I never go, I very seldom go past 90 because it's just not really necessary. However, even when you hit the top end of the throttle, it keeps accelerating. So I want that extra headroom of KV. I just don't want to be able to access it and break my battery if I push it too hard. So when I do that, the throttle curve gets all screwed up and it doesn't feel right anymore. So the throttle curve can interfere a little bit, not a lot. And it's really not going to make a difference unless you've been, you've been really finely tuned to your quad and the way your quad feels. However, this prop is very, very useful on 4S and 6S and 5S. It feels amazing on a 6S quad on 4S. It does not feel slow at all. The real question is, how does the S3 prop feel in the air? Well, as I said, when I first started talking about props, this is entirely preference. Any prop from the last year is gonna be totally fine. Just try it and see what you like. The S3 prop 
it is saying it's responsive is is tr is truly an understatement. This is this is easily the most responsive prop I've ever flown. But the most interesting thing about about that is that the prop isn't lighter than the T Motor 5143 prop. It's actually about the same weight, and they didn't even remove too much weight from the blade area. They actually removed a little bit of weight from the hub area, which I showed you. It's it's one millimeter shorter in the hub. And so you still have some weight out in the blade area, but it's a low pitch. It's about three pitch. And this is, I'm getting to the part where the video actually becomes informational and useful to those that are actually pilots. The low pitch gives you very, very good response, particularly on a quad that weighs a little bit more, like 600 grams-ish. You're gonna get much better immediacy of throttle response on a low pitch prop. That's why three pitch props, or just generally low pitch props, are so useful for aerial photography because they work so well in a static environment. I've tried to look for um, thrust numbers and thrust information from um, Engineer X. He sent, he actually did some prop tests for me and sent me a table of all the the numbers that he gave me. And I looked, I did a bunch of graphical analysis trying to find if there's any sort of reason why shallower pitch props tend to feel like they have more control and more grip and my results were completely inconclusive so I, I don't know based on the information I have but it feels like the lower pitch props just generally have more grip and control uh, grip more control and the common thought among the many people that I talk to is that it's because the steep pitch props actually stall in the air as they're spinning and so it doesn't it's not as effective at actually producing thrust or just effectively moving the air. So the shallower pitch props tend to move the air at a lower RPM than the steeper pitch props and that may be why they feel a little bit better. Anyways, getting back to how this prop feels in the air. So it is a 5 inch prop, it's not a 5.1 inch prop, it's a shallow pitch. It feels incredible in the air with respect to response. It is super, super responsive and that's what also makes it so creamy. The throttle feels super duper creamy and I dare say that this prop is so close to the glass fiber H the glass fiber HP five by four by three, it's it's scary. And there are there is one person that's sending me um, many people offered. There is one person that's sending me a couple of sets of the old glass nylon um, prop, and I'm going to be comparing against the two. But I, as if if Mr. Steel had as much of a hand in this prop as I think he did, I'm pretty sure it's pretty darn close to that prop. And it's also a prop that's been very carefully geared probably towards his motor and what he how, how he likes to fly which is obviously super fast and super responsive and super crazy but um yeah the kv i would recommend on this motor is probably 1800 1850 kv i know that his motor is 1700 kv and it does perform really well on 1700 kv as well i have i did fly it on uh, my 1722 kv 2207.5 motors it flies fantastically well on that and the amazing thing about this prop is that the more rpm you give it the more speed you just get out of it. On my 2208 1800 KV quad at 100% throttle, it just barely begins to flatten out. I can just barely hear it beginning to flatten out. So I would say 1800, 1850 KV is pretty much its limit. Unless you're flying a really, really light quad, then it's gonna be totally okay. You can probably go up to 1900 KV on 6S. Oh, I'm only talking about 6S by the way. I'm not talking about 4S. Um, this prop on a 6S quad with a 4S battery, is essentially not all that useful. It doesn't quite deliver the same amount of thrust. It just doesn't. It doesn't really do it because it does. It has such a low pitch. I'm assuming, and it's. It really needs the RPM to work. So it's just not really good to run this prop on a 6S quad with a 4S battery. And that's, like I said, one reason why I like the uh, 5.1 by 4.1 prop. But I'm getting to the part where it's. <laughs> It's going to get informational and useful right now. So let's discuss how I personally like to set up my quads. So I want my quads to fly pretty much like a phantom until I want to do any FPV moves. So I want it to be as smooth and as dumb and simple to fly as a phantom until I want to do a dive or a flip or roll or whatever. And the interesting thing about props is that you might think that you don't really need a super responsive prop to fly smoothly, but in reality, when you compare super responsive props like the T-Motor prop and this S3 prop to other props that just weigh a gram more, you know, 4.7 grams like the HQ 5.1 by 4.1 by 3, you'll notice that it's much easier for you to fly smoother with the much more responsive prop. But why is that? I personally, what I feel on the stick is that when I give it throttle inputs, just the slightest little throttle inputs, the lighter, more responsive blades, they give me that throttle 
like immediately like they are so quick to respond that it's like it's like the latency in the whole loop of me controlling the quad has dropped and I can actually do a better job flying smoother with less work and I don't have to think so much about it or just kind of like baby the sticks too delicately but this is also a double-edged sword because if your fingers are not super stable which mine definitely are not then having a prop that's a little bit a little bit heavier and duller in the response may actually help smooth you out and that is the real reason why i traded in my t-motor props for the hu 5.1 by 4.1 by 3. yes it has more power yes it's more durable yes it's all those good things but it weighs one gram more and it's a really good perform it really does perform really well it's actually more efficient than the s3 prop it gives me an extra 30 seconds of flight time and it just feels really nice in the air also but it doesn't quite have that response and when it doesn't have that response it's as if the feed forward has been dropped down lower now feed forward is a software thing it is not a hardware thing and it's important to make that distinction because software can only compensate so much for hardware and like i said with a t-motor prop oh sorry with the hq 4.1 prop i have to run a throttle curve in software to fly this prop really well because i can't i can't manage the throttle in this low end zone where it's like just like one millimeter of movement on the stick gives me too much difference in thrust so i have to smooth that thrust area out and like i said it's really hard to specify exactly where in your throttle range that point is which the inflection of thrust changes so that you can add a throttle curve on it and smooth it out so that is really the limitation of that prop but how but it is really smooth it is more efficient than the s3 blade which is a shocker really because it is a steeper pitch and the real reason why I switched to it is because I wanted that extra smoothity, I guess you could say. However, it's not as good in really tight situations like a little tight environments because it doesn't quite have the same response. Yeah, it's really a toss up. It's really hard to say. I would say I'm using the 4.1 prop in a more advanced manner because I'm altering my settings in Betaflight. But the S3 prop is actually better at doing what I want it to do. And getting back to the feed forward thing, so my feed forward is usually lower than usual. It's around 45 is what I set it to on moderate props. Like on the T motor prop, I had it set to 45. On the HU prop, I left it at 45, but uh, I could have moved it up to 50 if I wanted the teeny bit more response. And just, just to kind of reiterate feed forward, it really just increases the responsiveness of the stick. Um, the quad seems like it's exaggerating its response when you give it stick inputs if your feed forward is high. And like I said, I like my feed forward super duper as low as it can possibly be, such that I still feel like I'm totally in control and yet the quad is super smooth. And when I moved to the S3 prop, I actually dropped the feed forward down to 40, uh, even lower. I probably could go down to 38 because the prop is so darn responsive. It's too responsive. I can feel, I mean, I could see like my heartbeat <laughs> in the FPV feed sometimes if I'm nervous, like it's just, it's so darn responsive, it's a double-edged sword because you can modulate the throttle way smoother and way easier, but you also have to be exceptionally smooth on your fingers. The sticks are now ultra responsive and you have to be super smooth on, on your fingers. But another really important distinction I wanna make, when you drop the throttle, so this is something I've been battling for a long time on any quad, the dipping, issue with quads and so it's gotten a lot better recently and especially with the radix and the helio boards it's essentially gone but there is still some minor issue which i haven't tested on the helio board just yet i hope it really fixes it when you drop the throttle not even too fast first first of all use iterm relax iterm relax is what helps that throttle pump dipping issue much more than the other iterm whatever i don't know why iterm relax isn't the default at least that's my findings maybe i'm wrong but on all of my quads that's how it seems to perform I don't even know what it's doing. I mean, I sort of have a conceptual idea, but hey, honestly, I'm not a developer, so I don't really know. So getting back to that throttle pump issue, watch this. When I drop the stick, not even fast, when I drop the stick and go into this dive, you see my quad waver. I'm not doing that. That's not me on the sticks. The quad is doing it itself. And then when I come down out of this divey thing, I get another little yaw twist, similar to how little micros, like a, like a little whatever, tiny whoop things like the brush brush or brushless tiny whoop things when they come out of dives they just yaw out like crazy because the system's trying to compensate for things i get a similar effect on some quads 
And it's part of the reason why I run my uh, min throttle setting at six to seven percent, which is pretty high. Or on on D shot, on uh, multi shot, it's like eleven hundred, which is which is pretty darn high. When you arm it, it almost feels like it's going to take off, and I'm okay with that because it give, it makes sure my quad doesn't drop throttle so fast that it wobbles in the air more often. So I'm going to show you the same dip with the quad with the S3 props. This is the same quad and you don't see that dip. It's not even there. It's just not there. I know a lot of you are going to jump in and tell me, oh, you just got to increase your I, oh, you just got to increase your D, or you guys just got to tune this or tune that. I, I'm, I don't tune. Like I gave up tuning a long time ago and uh, I have changed all that stuff and I've tried to get this to be resolved, but it's just not resolved. But again, I have not tested the Helio board with this matter. Maybe it will fix it. Also, I have, I have not even gotten a Radix board, so I haven't even tested that at all. But I have not tested those boards. They are somewhat special, maybe, and they may fix these minor issues that I'm having. But for now, I don't need to do anything to prevent those things from happening with the S3 prop. So that's that's pretty much everything. I mean, I, I, could, I could literally go on for hours and hours discussing this, why my quads fly the way do they do, why I want them to fly the way I want them to fly. But you really just have to try it yourself and see what you like. The S3 prop is exceptionally smooth and creamy. And the biggest downside to me personally, I think, is that it's um, a little bit loud. So it's a lot louder than I want it to be. The 4.1 prop, it actually sounds like a vacuum cleaner. Like it sounds awesome. It sounds really nice in the air. And like I said, it is more efficient. I do get three minutes and 30 seconds of flight time on the 4.1 prop, whereas I get just about three minutes on the S3 prop, which is pretty significant. Comparing the T-Motor prop against the 4.1 against the S3 prop, I would say you can definitely stop buying the T-Boner prop. I'm sorry, Gem fan. I'm sorry, T-Motor. The S3 prop is just a lot better overall. Just stop buying that prop entirely. The S3 prop feels better, has better low-end throttle response. It has better high-end throttle response. It uh, is much more durable. It's, it's a better prop overall. I just wish it came in the, the dark black or the translucent black color so that it, it's just, if it, you do have props in view, it's just barely some props in view. Uh, yeah, that's about it. The 4.1 prop is also a fantastic prop. I will probably run the two interchangeably because the 4.1 prop just feels really nice as well. However, I really like the response of the S3 prop. Even though this prop flies so well and it feels so great and so close to the original 5x4x3 glass nylon prop that we loved so much, I actually like a lot of the newer props as well. And I would really, I know this is going to change the prop entirely, but I would like to see the S3 prop in a 5.1 inch and maybe just a hair more pitch on it, just a hair. I, it's probably going to change the prop entirely and it's going to lose its response. And I don't know, but Zhang, Zhang, Zhang or their HQ, they're all about making things and testing them. I hope that they continue testing this prop, making new molds and whatnot, because that's all they do all day long. And I'm really looking forward to this new kind of breed of prop, because it seems like they've figured something out so that they can get this incredible response and incredible ability that we want in a prop. I don't know if it's that 0.1 inch that is making the 4.1 prop more efficient. Maybe it is. I'm hoping it is because I really would like that extra 30 seconds back. It'd be really nice. Plus it feels like it'll give me a little bit more grip and just with a prop that's this responsive and this accurate on the throttle, when I give it throttle coming out of a dive or something, it when you have larger props and you have a more favorable disc loading number, which is the weight that's on all the prop disc area, you have more effective flight feel in your throttle response in general. And I personally think that in the coming year, racing is going to move to 5.5 and 6 inch props, primarily because of the uh, drift problem going through like long sweeping turns. It really is annoying to like drift through the turns. I'm going to be testing some things. Uh, I'm going to be testing. So there's one guy, the Shredicate, if you know Shredicate, the Shredicate website. I'm going to put that description in the link, a link in the description below. It's, um, he has done a lot of really freaking awesome testing and he's put like airfoils underneath his props to try and um, generate some side force. It's not drag, it's side force. He made that distinction for me. It's actually an airfoil that's going to generate sideways force such that the quad doesn't drift as much when you're going through long sweeper turns. 
which is a really annoying thing to have to do when you're racing because you have to kind of go through gates sideways. Anyways, I'm going to be testing angled motor mounts just in the uh, roll direction, not just the dihedral on the motor mounts, just, just like 15, 16 degrees on the roll direction, hoping that as you go through a turn, it will push you into the turn. One side of props will push you into the turn while the other side of props will kind of push you forward in the turn. They may just cancel each other out. I don't know. I mean, I've flown um, quads a long time ago with the full dihedral on the motors, and I and I was not good enough to be able to tell anything. But now I'm going to re revisit the concept again. Maybe it's going to change. Who knows? Uh, anyways, um, thanks for watching. It's, it's long video. So sorry for long video. Please floss your teeth. You ate all that turkey yesterday. You can floss all day today while you're shopping for who knows what.